Hello everybody and welcome back to the Tomb Raider Underworld walkthrough. It's time for the penultimate part of the story. And basically, th this part looks short and there is a very specific reason for that. It's because we're going to be spending the entire time in this one room. Why is that? Well, it's because, well, for starters, we've got to get all the treasures that are located in here. Which is a little bit of a hassle. But then we also have the wonderful joy of making our way to get the relic, because the relic is also in this room. Having said that, after we've done that we will get a bit, just a bit further than this room. Um, we'll, in fact, we'll get to the room of the final bit of the game, but the majority is going to be spent here. Now, this area is obviously very, very, very dangerous because you have lots of thralls, both the uh, I think they're Viking, but they might be Atlantean thralls, I'm not quite sure. Um, and also the Yeti thralls. But you can pretty much kill all of them quite quickly with Mjolnir. The slight frustration, however, is that they do pretty much constantly spawn. If you are playing on Master Survivalist mode, I'm pretty sure that they will constantly spawn the entire time you're here. So, really, you're going to be wanting to get through this place very, very quickly. I'm pretty sure that once you get to the other side, then they stop spawning. But if you are just playing on... Well, if you're playing on that difficulty, you're in trouble. Now, if you're playing on any of the lower difficulties, there is a way to get them to stop appearing. And that does seem to be... die. Because... I... well, I got ambushed on that particular platform, and let's just say that, uh... I fell off and into the A-tier, which was very horrible. And then when I came back to life, while there were a few enemies that were there, after I killed them all, no more appeared. And this proved to be the case, kind of, no matter where I was in the room, which does make the, everything really, really nice and easy. Although it is slightly unnerving, because it's just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, the relic is actually just behind that waterfall, but you've got to pull off an entire little puzzle to get that waterfall to stop flowing and then perform a slightly tricky grapple swing jump to get across. Yeah, they kind of went all out for their final relic puzzle. It, it, well, it is by far the most difficult to complete. Like, well and truly, it really, really, really is. It's mostly because it's, you, well, it's all the timing, because there are all these glyphs, as you can see, that are dotted around the room. And you need to... Uh, well, you need to hit all of them, and then get through that waterfall. But obviously that is quite a lot of room to traverse, especially when there are some pretty tricky jumps in here. And if you're wondering why I kept checking the sonar thing, it was just like, right, pause, give myself a breath, let's find out what the hell I'm doing, then move on. Because this is, other than the final boss room thing, technically, eh, this is your final challenge. But, let's open this thing up. And we enter the chapter Yggdrasil. Now it's at this point that we are going to be just picking up the last few treasures and then heading for the relic. As I said, that is ba your basic kind of description of what you've got to do. Um, basically, you will start with that glyph 
at the exit here, work your way all the way back down, and then work your way back up to the middle. And that is basically how you are going to complete this. And whilst I had, well, I, I did have numerous failed attempts at it, but this is the successful one. And I will use it as a decent time to talk about Idrasil, which is what the name of this chapter is. I honestly cannot find anything within the chapter that really links anything to Yggdrasil, but there we go. It is a very, very, very important thing in Norse mythology. Because it is this huge tree which connects the nine worlds of Norse cosmology. Um, specifically, it's an ash tree, and it's in Incredibly holy. I don't quite know why it's specifically ash, but there we go. And basically, what Yggdrasil serves as, other than kind of like connecting all the worlds, um, the gods go to Yggdrasil daily to assemble their stuff and everything. And the branches extend far into the heavens, and it's supported by three roots that extend far away into other locations. So one goes to the well Utharbruna in the heavens, one to the spring Felgelmia, and another to the well Mimisbrunner. And then there are kind of numerous creatures living within Yggdrasil, including the worm, which is a dragon, Nithroga, which is an unnamed eagle, and the stags Dian, Dvalin, Dinea, and Durathro. I think there's quite a lot of confusion over the etymology of Yggdrasil. The generally accepted version is Odin's horse. So, the Drasil bit means horse, and Ygir, or Ig, is one of Odin's many names. So that's where that kind of comes from. There are also Gallows, because, or at least that's another varied interpretation because the poetic Ada poem Havamal describes how Odin sacrificed himself by hanging from a tree, making the tree Odin's gallows. So that may have been Yggdrasil. It's all slightly confusing, but it's just really awesome. And I've brought up Yggdrasil in numerous playthroughs and walkthroughs that I've done because it has turned up. So Tales of Symphonia is a prime example because Yggdrasil was the name of the primary villain in that game. And that was another game that is really heavily tied up in Norse. But I say, kind of, that is kind of my source, or at least the source of my interest in trees in mythology. Because it's just a really cool idea. And the fact that there are so many mythical trees as well is just slightly balmy because you have the tree in the Garden of Eden that gives the, has the fruit of knowledge on it or whatever the heck it is. And there are many, many, many other mythological trees. And it's just the fact that that whole growth and cycle of birth and rebirth that comes of trees is just really, really amazing. But with my nice little tree tangent done, there's much more that I could probably say about Yggdrasil, but we are about to enter into very, very, very serious plot territory. Like, very ultra serious. As you can see just ahead, we have all the treasures and relics at this point, so all that's left is plot. And, oh boy, this is a doozy. Mother? Mother, it's... 
It's me. It's Lara. And I've never seen such delicious irony. When I heard what happened to the wife of the great Richard Croft, I knew I could set him on a desperate quest to find what I desired most. Then he betrayed me in Thailand, and for that, I killed him myself. But when you showed up with Thor's gauntlet, I knew I could send you off in your father's footsteps, confident they would lead us to this very spot. You seem to have forgotten what I would be holding. When I made this creature for Amanda, she had no idea that my true purpose was to have the means to destroy you at this very moment. The two of you never suspected that you were mere actors in my play. And so it ends. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a serpent to raise. you off, but the Midgard Serpent will tear the world apart, and only Thor's hammer can stop it. Go. I'll hold them off. And so, that was the fate of Amelia Croft. Now, I will be going into something that I think is a quite clever connection there. Either in the next part or in the DLC stuff, because there's not really enough time to go into it in detail right now, because we are moments away from reaching the final room and therefore the end of this part. But it's a very clever little thing that they did with Amelia Croft. But with the death of that yeti, the final room is upon us. It's time to save the world.